Kick it. Hi, Ed Griswold here again, and welcome back. What I'm going to do today in this video is take you on a little walk around the interface and show you some of the uh, buttons before we actually start bringing any content in. So the first thing is the uh, buttons in the upper left-hand corner here, where you see open, preset, save preset, last preset, close preset. Open preset is, think of it as an uh, open file. You would open a previously set up configuration that's going to bring in all your settings and content. Uh, save preset would be, you would use that uh, button and if you're going to, after you configure the interface, uh, we've brought in you know, your, the number of cameras you're using, types of cameras you're using, your stills, PowerPoints, video, lower thirds. You've built this content, this, this nice little package. Now you want to save it so that you can open it at a later date. Because one of the great things about the Streamery systems is you can actually do uh, set up custom presets based on different events. So if you have a football game to shoot one night, uh, you can go in and preset all, you know, load in all your lower thirds, all your content, any of your sponsor information, get that in and defined, and then save that as a preset. So that when you actually show up at the event, you simply load the preset and voila, everything is there. And it helps to kind of lower the stress before the event. And then the last uh, preset button here is the basically loads the previous settings uh, or you know loads in everything you were using previously, and then close preset you know kind of self-explanatory, in that you will close uh, whatever you've got open will close back to a very basic setting of the system, so you can in essence start from scratch to build a new preset. Then we'll jump across here to the middle, and there's the full screen button. Uh, the full screen button is defined, it basically is in place for when you have a secondary monitor or projector connected, connected to the system, it will take whatever is in the program side, this, and, and send it to that device uh, and go full screen with it based on your settings. Uh, the next one across here is your pause rendering, and that one basically brings everything to a screeching halt. Uh, if I click that button, all of a sudden, my picture, as you can see, I'm talking, my mouth is not moving, and that is because I've clicked, clicked that button. And then I can resume, and it picks up and goes from there. So if you needed to pause the output for some reason, it, it's available to you. Uh, pause inputs, that uh, deals with uh, usually with video, PowerPoints, uh, those kind of things. It will uh, globally bring those to a standstill. Then we have our uh, basic button. And basic, was, uh, what that does is it simplifies the interface. Right now, you're seeing the interface and in the advanced uh, mode, so that it has more, there are more buttons, you can do more things. But if your operators are either not familiar, familiar with all of these buttons, or you don't want them to access these buttons, then you can put this into a basic uh, mode, and you can see all the mo majority of the buttons disappear. So it's for a basic operation. Uh, you could, this comes in really handy if you've uh, got, you know, once you've preloaded all your content and you don't want your operators to have the ability to make certain changes, you can, you can drop to a basic mode. And then you can also uh, lock that mode in place so that they can't close files or, those, or remove anything from the interface. Because once this little lock is set, uh, I can't, you know, go over here, I, can't I cannot close that input. And so I'll go back to advanced mode here. And settings, settings deals with the internal setup of the system as far as the display, other, other options, performances, decoders. This, this is more uh, definitely uh, the area for the advanced user uh, to get into. But there are some basic things in here you do need to be aware of, uh, such as the recording and setting up the default folder for any type of recordings. Uh, the systems, the streamers, just do come with a recording drive to be able to handle all the media when you're recording to that drive. Uh, you can see here that it, you know, it allows you to browse to the directory, to the folder that you're going to record to. So if you are recording to different folders based on different events, you can, you can change that as needed. 
Uh, there's also a memory buffer uh, settings here. Uh, I'll go on to color space. The, these, most of these tabs you are not going to have to mess with because we, they are predefined uh, Active Factory. Uh, the only really tabs you're going to be uh, utilizing what I would think would be the record tab, uh, the external output tab. You might go in here and turn things off. Generally speaking, uh, these tabs, once you've gone in and, and they have been set, you won't have to ever go back into them again. Um, but the external tab, what that's for is turning things on and off such as for the, for the projector and for streaming and for maybe for live analog out. If you have the analog option installed, uh, this deck link render box, that would be checked off. And that would allow the uh, program video to be uh, sent to that output module uh, to be delivered to TVs or to a TV station locally. Uh, the next one here is an audio module. Like I said, these are, th these are things that you're probably not going to have to find yourself going into unless you've contacted te technical support and they're advising you to go into those places and make some adjustments. Uh, then we also have the, the web feature. Now the web feature is something I'm going to be demoing in later videos. It's a really, really neat uh, feature, but what it, mainly in a nutshell, what it allows you to do is to, if you have the system on a Wi-Fi or a wired network and you have a, either an iPad or an Android pad or even a phone that has access to that network, you can remotely control the system. Then we have our tally lights. If you've purchased the tally light option, uh, this right here is the panel you'll go into to set up the tally lights uh, and then assign them uh, based on what they're going to be attached to for cameras or, uh, or other physical inputs. Uh, then we also have our shortcuts. This is the area you come into to set up keyboard shortcuts. And if you want to use your keyboard to activate certain inputs or to activate certain uh, other assets that you may have included in your setup. Um, and then of course the about, which the about just shows you your licensing information. And just so you know, your licensing basically is based on a 100 year license. Uh, you can, uh, if, if you do find yourself in situations where you are having to change your configurations in the settings panel, you can export these out and save them as individual config files that you can import in as needed based on the situation. Uh, I'm going to work down here to the bottom and you'll see the add input button. That's pretty self-explanatory, but this is the button you'll be using most often compared to the rest of the buttons. And it's the one that navigates to the input select panel and you can see the top tabs across the top here based on uh, what type of asset or input you are going to be adding to your switch. Whether it be a, a video, be a video file. And once you've selected that, you can choose the browse button. And you can see down here in the lower right hand corner of this tab with the number of the types of videos that you can bring into the system. Uh, from AVIs to WMVs, I mean you can see that the list goes on. It's pretty, pretty extensive. There are a lot of different file types you can bring in and play back. Uh, close that. And then and the audio. Uh, there again, audio. Uh, you can bring in a number of different file types, MP3, WAVs, MP2s, uh, those kind of things. Those are the most common uh, audio file types you will find on the market out there. And then images, JPEGs, um, PNGs, B, uh, BIMPs or BMPs. Uh, those, uh, the uh, PNGs, uh, those carry alpha uh, as well as, uh, GIF can carry alpha as well uh, if you've assigned it one. But the most popular one is for doing like lower your own custom lower thirds would be a PNG file. So if you've got something like Photoshop or if you're using the installed Aura program to create your lower thirds, you'll export those out as PNGs uh, to bring in an ad to the system. Then we move on to photos. And uh, the photos tab with this is for is to bring in a number of images together. Uh, for instance, if, you, if you're going to do, do an image-based slideshow, you would choose the photo tab and then you can browse to, you'll actually browse to the actual folder. You won't point to a particular picture, but you'll browse to the actual folder. It will bring all the pictures in and allow you to do a, a slide and to create a slideshow. And down to the PowerPoint, um, which is another self-explanatory button. Uh, if you have the PowerPoint engine installed in the system, 
then this will allow you to bring in PowerPoints and add them to the mix. Uh, PowerPoints must be static, they cannot be animated, they basically have to be still frames. Uh, and then you would simply bring the PowerPoint in and you can, you can play those back, but similar to the photos where you will uh, set the duration that the, the, that the slide is going to be seen and then you can also select the type of transition between slides and how long the tra transition will last and you can tell and it will loop. Uh, now here's a really cool one and that is the uh, DVD. The DVD tab lets you uh, literally import a DVD. If you have a DVD sitting in the DVD player on the system, you can point to that DVD drive and it will allow you to import and, and play it and add it to the switch. And if the, if the DVD does have menus, you have complete menu control. Uh, the capture tab is for bringing in live video sources. Uh, you have in the systems, we give you uh, between four to eight uh, live input uh, sources. Uh, but if you have installed a, uh, a webcam, this is also where you would bring that webcam into the system as well. So you're not just limited to the four sources that we give you. You actually can add on multiple sources. Uh, the desktop uh, capture feature, that is a uh, plug-in, basically a little application that you can put on a thumb drive, whether it be a PC or Mac, and if that system and the other system is attached to the same network, you can source that system's desktop across the network as an added input, and you, you can have unlimited number of uh, different sources available. Not only are you, can you see what's going on, but if there's, playing, if there's video playing, you can choose to capture that audio as well. Then we have an audio input selector, and that is if you have a separate audio capture device, you are able to add that to the mix as well. And then our flash RTMP. What that one is designed for is to capture flash streaming uh, video from remote uh, cameras or if you have the Teradact cubes, uh, you can point to their location and capture that wirelessly onto the, uh, off of the Wi-Fi network that you're attached to. Then we move on to our XAML files. And XAML is if somebody has created any custom animations in uh, Microsoft Blend or, either to, or .NET and they've exported the files out for you, this gives you the ability to bring those either stills or animations into the system and add them to the mix uh, as well. Then the video de delay, that is what this is designed for is your video replay uh, mechanism so that you can uh, capture your program out and then replay that at a speed for anywhere from a negative, um, you know, slow motion value up to a high speed value. And you can choose uh, where it's gonna be captured from, uh, whether it be an external device, uh, you can also choose your resolution and you're uh, saving your codec at. And then there's a slider here, the slider, because uh, the way it works is it buffers the video and it's a continuing rolling buffer. Uh, right now, by default, it's set to 20 seconds. So you're constantly uh, capturing 20 second segments so that when you do hit the button, it will, it will automatically bring in a 20 second segment and make it available to you uh, for your switch to switch to live in real time. And then the next tab we go to is our title tab. Uh, these are the built-in titles that come with the system. Uh, they are editable as far as the text. You can uh, uh, you know, change what the text says. You can also change text color, check text size. Uh, you can also, if they, are, if they are an animated title, here's where you would adjust the, also the speed of the animation of that title. And it's simply a matter of just selecting the, the title and hitting OK and adding that to the mix. And in there you can see that we have several different types of titles. Uh, we have uh, the title button for the animated, we have scoreboards, uh, timers, tickers, and then plain, just a plain ordinary text with no graphics. There's also the multi-view for doing side-by-side, -side. it's like an interview type and then the All tab, which shows you uh, all of the uh, lower thirds or titles that are available to you. Then we go to our color, and the color is just that, is to bring in a, a solid color uh, slide to use in your mix. Then we have the List button, and the list, well, that is there to bring in a list of either video, or actually, it's, a, it's to play back uh, audio files or a list that you've predefined 
in something such as uh, Win uh, Windows Media Player. You can, say, you can save that list out, or you can go ahead and just point to a folder that has a, a list of different MP3 or WAV files and bring the, uh, bring the entire list in, and you can tell to randomize that list. Uh, you can also, you know, uh, once you start it, it will automatically loop for you, so they can be part of, part of the mix as well. And then we go on to our virtual sets. And this tab allows you to navigate through the virtual sets that are included in the system. Um, there are some videos that you will see in this list that will show you how to use those. Also, some of the videos show you how to do a customized virtual set. Uh, the RTSP, there that one is to enter. If you have or know of a RTSP server and you know the URL to that video, then you can simply pipe that video in there and use that as a source. So if you're aware of a streaming video and you know what that flash address is, you can put that address into the system and add that as part of your mix. And that concludes the tabs for the input settings uh, panel. Come back out of there. And then I'll move over to our recording buttons here. And the recording setup button, this is where you're going to define what type of file you're going to record to the hard drive whether it be an AVI, MPEG-2, WMV, or an WMV streaming file that would be uploaded. Uh, this is also where you, you, know, you, you choose your size, your bit rate. Uh, all the selections are there uh, for, to, to, to help you out, get the uh, absolute most quality video you can possibly get. And once you've set that up, then whenever you're ready during, but prior to your switch going live, you hit the start button and that will automatically start recording. And if, I, if you do not set it up correctly, you will get an error requester that will pop up and tell you what the problem is. Uh, but if you, if you have set it up uh, correctly, then uh, it will automatically start recording. So in this case, uh, I'm going to set to the M drive. And I'll make sure everything is set here. It looks like everything is OK. So I should be able to hit this start button. And it turns green, and it starts to record. And you can see, uh, then uh, from start, it changes to the word stop. When I want to stop recording, uh, I can simply click it. And you'll also notice just to the right of there is a little timer. It's, it, it is counting down the recording as I, as I go to give you the far as the amount, you know, amount of time you recorded. And I can stop that. And the next one is the external button here. The external button, that one is related to the external output tab. Uh, and what it does is it, it activates the uh, vMix video device and or DeckLink renderer and just turns them on or off. So you have complete control. So you're not worried about your program having to go to black before you can, you can disable or enable things. You can control things separately depending if you're doing a live event and streaming at the same time, you want to be able to trigger those independently and not have them both, depending on what the event is, you may, your stream may cut short of the live event. If, you're only, if your event is two hours and you're only streaming for an hour, then obviously you want to be able to stop the stream without having to disable the live event that may be going on if you're going to a projector, for, just as an example. Like so you, can, you, know, you can start and stop that as well. And then we move over here to our right and a little speaker icon. Uh, that gives you access to the uh, audio mixer. As you bring in elements, this mixer, you'll sh you will get each, uh, each element uh, will add a mixing channel to that, whether it be a live input or if a, if a video or audio file, you you actually will add elements to the mixer. And then we have our streaming button here, and this is designed for flash streaming. As long as you have the flash media encoder installed, if you don't want to use the flash media encoder directly, you can enter the, the same information that you enter into the flash media encoder as far as you're transmitting your URL, the key, uh, the authentication. If they give you a user uh, name and password, uh, you'll enter that there along with input size. All the information you just enter is right here and, re and ready to go for you. And you can also, once you have entered that, if you have different content delivery networks, you can save them out individually and then recall them through a list. And then we have our multicoder. The multicoder is for the is, is an option that is available mainly on the broadcast system, and what that is designed for is to capture or 
uh, bring in different live sources and encode them to an internal hard drive array independent, independently. Think of it as like an ISO record. Uh, you independently record your files and, and save them in their RAWs, uh, not counting the, the switch. Uh, so that's where the multicoder comes in. Like I said, that is an option. Uh, you can talk to your salesperson about that. Uh, the next one is an additional overlay feature uh, that you can do, and this is a, something that, that you would assign uh, if you're going to have something switching live in the background, continuously switching, and you but you want to say set a bug in, the, in one of the in one of the lower you know, the corners or anywhere on the screen for that matter. This is a really cool feature that lets you establish where that bug is going to be placed, as far as its physical size. Uh, is, it, uh, you know, is, it going to be, is it going to be picture picture or full screen? Uh, is it going to fade up, fade down, different transitions you can assign to it? Uh, it also, you use this panel to control uh, if you're going to do any you know, live stingers, any animated lower uh, transitions. Uh, this is also where you would do that. Uh, you'll, see, you'll see videos available for you that will show you how to do the, take advantage of those features. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little video on our jaunt uh, around the uh, interface and talking about the different buttons that are available. Uh, before I forget, I, wanted, I didn't point out the transitions buttons. Those uh, are different uh, uh, transitions that are available to you versus the usual cuts and fades, which you can see at the very top here, cut and fade. Uh, also, there's a quick play, and the quick play button is there to take a, a file and uh, instantly start it. So mainly if you have a video file and you click that, it will throw it into the program out and instantly start it for you if you have not turned that feature on. Uh, because in the options panel, there is a feature which allows it to automatically start files. But if you have that turned off, then you can take advantage of the quick play button and have it do it for you. And I hope you like I hope you've enjoyed this little jaunt around the interface. And if you have any questions, please uh, see your salesperson for for those, and we'll do our best to make sure you get those questions answered. Thank you so much. Kick it.